Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 10 TV Shows of 2017. This is a video I look forward to doing all year, even though I know it isn't that popular, but I'm constantly wondering throughout the entire year where a certain show will fall on my end of the year ranking. So this is where I rank my top 10 favorite shows of 2017 and my top three most disappointing shows of 2017. So for this list, I look at a season of a show that ended its run in 2017 and rank them. To be eligible for this list, a season needed to have ended in 2017. Most shows like Netflix shows, Mr. Robot, Better Call Saul, Black Sales, and shows like that had their entire run season in uh, 2017, and they of course are eligible. But where it gets a bit tricky is shows like The Walking Dead and Vikings, which seasons are split over several calendar years. In that case, I picked the season that ended in 2017. For example, The Walking Dead Season 7 would be eligible for my list, even though the first half of the season aired in 2016, and Season 8 would not be eligible because Season 8 has yet to finish its run at this stage. For Vikings, that means Season 4 is eligible, despite the fact that the vast majority of it aired in 2016, and only the last quarter of the season aired this year. But because it finished its run in 2017, it wasn't eligible for the countdown in 2016, so it's eligible for this one. This means that Star Trek Discovery is not eligible for this list, as it has yet to finish its first season. Also, I'm including certain Netflix shows that were released uh, all at once at the very end of December 2016, such as Travelers, which I will include Season 1, which Where I Live was released in late December of 2016, uh, but it missed out on my 2016 countdown, and Season 2 will be released late December 2017, but has... Uh, of the making of this video, I have yet to see it, so that will have to be held over for 2018. And likewise, Black Mirror Season 4 will have to be held over for 2018 as well. Also, this countdown is only for drama series, as although I do watch a few comedy series, I find it's sort of apples and oranges comparing it. I'm honestly more of a drama guy, and uh, I'm not as much into comedy, so even though I love certain comedy shows like Rick and Morty, Bojack Horseman, and The Orville, uh, and even though they do have dramatic elements to them, I consider these comedies and thus are not eligible for this list. Uh, so that leaves me with over 25 shows that I watched this year that are eligible for this list. So now let me get into ranking them. But before I get into my top 10, let me start with my top three most disappointing shows of 2017. Now this is a very different kind of list from a worse list since I don't really watch shows I don't like. Uh, this list is all for good shows. However, this list is for shows where the season that aired in 2017 didn't hold up to the high standards set by its previous seasons. So these rankings are relative to its own show. So one show that's higher than another doesn't mean I think it's worse. It just means I found it more disappointed, disappointing, comparatively speaking, to the quality of its previous season. Also, just because this show appears on this list doesn't necessarily disqualify it from appearing on my top 10 best list. So let me start with my number 3 most disappointing show of this year, and that is Sense8 Season 2. This wasn't an altogether bad season, it did have its moment, uh, but structurally it was a bit of a mess. It definitely failed to live up to the high quality set by its uh, first season. Uh, to be fair to, uh, to the premise of the show, it's quite difficult to pull off as it centers around eight different storylines taking place all over the world uh, and at the same time and sometimes these storylines intersect through like psychic connections. So I felt uh, season one pulled this difficult task off well, but season two wasn't quite up to the task. There was a lot of behind the scenes difficulties that we heard about uh, from the grapevine which may explain why things didn't come together. Uh, the season relied too much on cheesy montages which they overdid to death and the pacing was very poor. 
Uh, this was most apparent in its final episode, which was outrageously rushed, where earlier episodes seemed to meander. Making Sense8 Season 2 a disappointing season. Next is my number two disappointing show, and that is Orphan Black Season 5. So sad that its final season should make this list, as Orphan Black was also in my most disappointing list two years ago, but last year it managed to turn itself around with an amazing season and actually made my top 10 best. Unfortunately, this year they kind of threw away all the goodwill built up in season 4, including interesting characters and storylines, and instead went right back to the overly complicated, convoluted storytelling that made season 3 so bad. Where Season 5 did indeed have its moments as well, it was too bogged down with ridiculous storylines and over-the-top villains, monsters in the woods, and unbelievable plot twists. As well as the fact that they killed off the character with the most potential for no good reason whatsoever. The season was always at its best when it focused on character stories. Unfortunately, these great character moments were drowned out by poorly conceived, plot-heavy moments making Season 5 of Orphan Black a very disappointing season. And my number one most disappointing show of 2017 is Game of Thrones Season 7. I'm as shocked as anyone at this pick, and I can't believe we've gotten to a point where I feel this is where uh, Game of Thrones belongs. Has every year since I've been doing these top 10 lists, Game of Thrones is typically a shoe-in for my number one best show of the year, which is why I had to put Season 7 as my number one most disappointing. Despite the fact that I don't th think that the season was as bad as the previous two entries on this list, this show had a lot further to fall since its previous seasons were just so amazing. Now, the first four episodes of this seven-episode season were actually really good, particularly Episode 4, which I feel is one of the best episodes of the entire show. However, its final three episodes uh, is what really brought the season and perhaps the entire show down as it quickly rushed through its storylines in sometimes implausible and inconsistent ways where characters behaved out of character and acted obtuse for the purposes of pushing the plot forward as fast as possible. Storylines that worked well in previous seasons, such as romances and White Walker invasions and political intrigue, did not feel as thought out and felt like poorly constructed imitations compared to what was accomplished in previous seasons. Which is a shame, since I had come to expect a high-quality, well-constructed, and well-executed storyline from the show, whereas here... Those things seem to, they seem to sacrifice those things in favor of fan service, making Game of Thrones Season 7 the most disappointing season of 2017. So enough of the negativity, let me now get to my favorite shows of 2017, but before I get into my top 10 list, let me start with a few honorable mentions that almost made the list, but not quite. First honorable mention was the show I was just talking about, Game of Thrones Season 7. Despite its less than stellar ending, it still had a great start with a spectacular first four episodes, which included what was, in my opinion, the best battle sequence in the entire show, the best opening sequence uh, that any season had, and the very first ship battle that was done right. Add to that a lot of fascinating character moments such as Jon and Sansa learning to work together, Arya impressing Brienne of Tarth, and Jaime starting to learn that his sister may not be the best thing for him. These moments were handled well with the high quality that I come to expect from Game of Thrones, which earns it at least an honorable mention on my list. Next honorable mention is Dark Matter Season 3. I'm a bit disappointed I couldn't fit this into my top 10, but there was a lot of competition this year. But what 
uh, is very sadly likely to be the last season of Dark Matter was quite impressive as it built off the momentum established in season two and took the show in new directions including integrating time travel and parallel universe storylines in new and exciting ways. And the way it handled one of the main cast members turning into a villain was incredibly impressive. I didn't think they'd be able to pull it off convincingly but they did an amazing job at it so I was super impressed. And my final honorable mention is The Punisher Season 1, an excellent comic book adaptation that built off this amazing character played wonderfully by John Bernthal, who first appeared in Daredevil. This show about a gun-toting vigilante who kills criminals by the dozens is surprisingly drama-based and focuses on some excellent character stories, mainly dealing with the trauma of the main character Frank Castle that he suffers from losing his family and his experiences in war, and how he teams up with another wanted man who was unjustly separated from his family in order to try to reunite him with his family while at the same time getting the revenge that he seeks. It also manages to address issues like government surveillance and post-traumatic uh, distress syndrome in meaningful ways while telling a very suspenseful and engaging story. So now we'll get into my top 10 favorite shows of 2017, starting with my number 10, Vikings Season 4. This was an amazing, groundbreaking season of Vikings that took the show in uh, new directions, which included a controversial time jump about 10 years into the future, which many had a problem with, but personally, I loved it and thought it was a brilliant move. Although I will say the second half of the season, which is uh, practically a different season as it aired like eight months after the first half of the season was definitely better than the first half of the season and um the over the season might have ranked higher if i was just judging it by its second half and not its first half uh, because i thought the second half was absolutely brilliant it took a lot of risks and shook the entire structure of the show sure it's based on history but that doesn't mean they had to handle it the way they did so i give them a lot of credit in the way that they shifted the main focus of the show and the fact uh, that they managed to do it in a way that increased rather than decreased the quality of the show is extremely impressive next on to my number nine which is travelers season one uh, this original science fiction show from the creators of Stargate SU-1 surprised me as I thought this would just be an average sort of time travel show but I was in fact blown away by it as it told intense suspenseful stories that had me on the edge of my seat. And the premise behind it about time travelers from the future taking over the bodies of people who are about to die uh, and are present uh, in order to prevent some post-apocalyptic future was fascinating. But more than that, the show had a cast of interesting and fully fleshed out characters which were fascinating to explore, particularly towards the end of the season where the characters had to reconcile their connection to the relationship they formed in their new lives to their time travel missions. And on top of that, the show asks some hard questions and really toys with the moral dilemmas involved with time travel and also leads to mind-bending situations where time has been tampered with so much you're not sure what is real anymore. Ultimately, an original and fascinating new sci-fi series. Coming in at number 8 is Stranger Things Season 2. This highly anticipated second season of Stranger Things was, in my opinion, even better than the first as it didn't rely too heavily on nostalgia and set itself apart from the 80s material it was emulating more. And more than that, unlike its first season, it didn't fizzle out at the end. In fact, it got even stronger as the season went, leading to a spectacular ending that was more than satisfying. And this episode went even deeper into character exploration, fleshing out each of the characters even more, as Dustin had an interesting plot involving a strange pet creature, uh, Lucas de uh, developed a relationship with an interesting new character, Mike was dealing with the loss of Eleven, and Will was uh, being possessed by an alien creature. And of course, uh, most interesting of all was Eleven's backstory, which was explored to in fascinating directions as she formed a daughter-father relationship with Jim Hopper and explored her own past finding about 
finding out about her mother and long lost sister. And these explorations were done extremely well, overall making this an exceptional season. Coming in at number 7 is 13 Reasons Why Season 1. This show really surprised me as I thought it would be a typical cheesy high school drama, but the realism depicted in the show was really striking and one of the first teenage dramas to remind me of what it was actually like to be in high school. Rather than feeling like a bunch of business execs lame attempt to appeal to teenagers or a glamorized, funkified version of high school, this show reminded me of some of my favorite high school dramas like Pump Up the Volume that focuses more on how much it sucks to be a teenager and Moreover, it explores relevant issues like suicide, internet bullying, and sexual assault in delicate and yet meaningful and powerful ways, calling attention to what victims suffer through. But more than that, it tells some powerful character stories with a large cast of fully fleshed out characters whom you can really relate to and want to see how their stories unfold, all told over the backdrop of an entire high school affected by a suicide. It was a wonderful, acted, beautifully told story making it one of the best shows of 2017. So next on to my number six, which is Narcos Season 3. Narcos has remained consistent in its excellence, even in Season 3, which took a sharp turn in its narrative focus, as instead of focusing on one crime lord, it focused on a whole group of them. But the way it does it is absolutely fantastic and it totally lives up to the high bar set by its previous seasons. Season 3 has more of an ensemble cast uh, feel to it than previous seasons and I think it really works to the benefit of the show as we focus on some fascinating characters including a security consultant who works for the Narcos and how this will negatively affect his life. It's the personal stories like these that really make this season shine, although the powerful suspense stories of the DEA trying to nail the almost untouchable narcos remain just as engaging as ever. So we come now to my top five, the best of the best. 2017 certainly was a great year for TV shows, so it was hard to narrow it down to five bests, but these are, in my opinion, the most spectacular shows out of a great year. So we'll start with my number five, Black Sails Season 4. This final season of Black Sails decided to go out on an incredibly high note with each and every episode of the season being powerful, thought-provoking, engaging, and most of all, dark. This season certainly went in dark directions. Most shows don't, uh, you know, wouldn't dare to go uh, because the horror involved in like fighting and losing a battle and the lengths both sides will go to in order to win and all the moral gray areas that entails. Throughout the season, I was blown away how each episode managed to maintain a high level of tension and managed to shock you uh, when you didn't think it was possible. And this all accumulated in an excellent, ambiguous ending that stayed true to the kind of tale-telling that uh, the show was based on, making it the perfect ending to honor the show that came before it, making this one of the better seasons of 2017. And coming in at number four is Better Call Saul Season 3. Now, I do believe this is the lowest rated Better Call Saul has ever been on one of my end of the year top ten lists, but that says a lot more about how stiff the competition was this year than it does about the quality of Season 3, because this was perhaps the best season of Better Call Saul, as it went even deeper into exploring the relationships that are at the heart of the show and all the twists and turns that this entails as well as exploring uh, Jimmy McGill's uh, developing relationship with his brother Chuck and an uneasy romance with Kim, Season 3 introduced Breaking Bad favorite Gus Fring, which really spiced up the season and brought in a new dynamic to spice up Mike's storyline. Season 3 was never short of tense moments, amazing acting, and that spectacular montages that the show was known for, but it brought them all to new high levels of quality, making Season 3 of Better Call Saul one of the best of the year. So now we come to my top three, and I will say I did have a very clear number one in my mind. However, the number three and two, it was less clear, and I kept swapping them back and forth. In my mind, they are both number two. 
you know, a close number two at that. But I made a personal rule to never cop out and have a tie, so I did finally decide an order. But just know that uh, it's, I think, really highly of all three seasons, and all three are among my favorite seasons of all time. But we'll start with my number three, which is The Leftovers Season 3. This final season of The Leftovers was amazingly powerful where it took the themes of lost and suffering that made the show uh, so great but mixed it with a false sense of an uh, oncoming uh, apocalypse and took that to explore where it is that people may think the, uh, what would happen when people think uh, the world is ending. And thus we get a detailed character study of all the main characters involved as we, you know, we take turns uh, getting inside each, each of their heads to see how they are affected by this. Thus, each episode has a very rich and distinct flavor to it, and each flavor was absolutely great to explore. Although I must admit the ending wasn't quite as powerful as I'd prefer, which perhaps is why this uh, didn't come in at number two, it was still an absolutely amazing season that continued to blow me away and featured what is, in my opinion, one of the best metaphorical and mind-blowing pieces of fiction ever created with its penultimate episode, which I could talk about and analyze for hours on end. It's this kind of complex, heartfelt, moving, and thought-provoking kind of storytelling that is, in my opinion, the pinnacle of fiction, making this one of the best seasons of 2017. So we'll get to my number two, which is Mr. Robot Season 3. This was, in my opinion, by far the best season of Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot has always been a great show with excellence in acting, cinematography, editing, and music and managed to tell some deep and rich character stories. However, the two previous seasons has always meandered a bit in its storytelling, getting bogged down in uninteresting and irrelevant side plots, whereas season three doesn't do that at all and finally lives up to the show's full potential as each and every episode of the season packs a huge punch and came with a high quality of storytelling that remained consistently good throughout. In fact, the mid-season, which is typically where a season meanders or treads water a bit, just blew me away with original and outstanding episodes that are magnificent works of art in their own right. But what Mr. Robot does best is explore the mindset of its main characters and how circumstances affect them through a series of complex, high-tension uh, um, tales that explore a society falling in on itself, which of course features a lot of poignant social commentary. Mr. Robot is complex, high-stakes, character-based storytelling at its best, and this season was its crowning achievement. So finally, we'll get to my number one favorite TV show of 2017, and that is The Expanse Season 2. Now, I knew from season one that The Expanse was a remarkable new science fiction TV show worth watching, but season two took it to a level that I did not think was possible. Season two began with high-quality, supercharged episodes that were so uh, good, I assumed that there was no way the season would be able to maintain that high level of quality, but boy was I wrong, as this show only got better from there, exploring new and exciting characters in new and unexpected ways that uh, took uh, the somewhat confusing and overly complicated plot of season one and turned it into something more focused and fascinating to explore. The fifth episode in particular was one of the best hours of television I have ever seen in my life and to say I was completely blown away by it would be a vast understatement. The season continues to route to tell well-constructed high suspense level stories that got you to relate and care about the characters involved uh, while featuring some amazing cinematography and special effects especially considering it's relatively low budget. It also had many thought-provoking moral dilemmas that presented bleak situations but used them to highlight humanity's ever-enduring spirit thus making this a powerful uh, watch rather than a casual one. The Expanse Season 2 is, in my opinion, an achievement in television and the high-quality storytelling that can be told and perhaps one of my top three 
favorite tele uh, seasons of television of all time. So it most certainly is my number one favorite show of 2017. So that's it for my top 10 favorite shows of 2017. Be sure to check out my channel this week as I continue my end of the year celebration with my top 20 favorite episodes of 2017, my top 10 favorite movies of 2017, and my own personal awards for 2017. Also be sure to check out my channel in the coming new year as I review many shows uh, that are mentioned on this list and as always continue my coverage of Star Trek. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching. Mm -hmm.